This is Channel Pro Weekly, episode 267, with guest Rayanne Buccianico of ABC Solutions, recorded July 8th, 2024. Hello and welcome to Channel 4 Weekly, episode 267. My name is Matt Whitlock, technology editor for the Channel Pro Network and your host uh, of this fine show for uh, IT providers and managed service providers like you. Uh, welcome, welcome one and all. It's great to great to be back. Um, we've got an awesome guest lined up for us today. Very, very excited to have her on. For those who have uh, been longtime viewers or listeners, she is, they've seen her bright, smiley face and heard her wonderfully distinct and beautiful angelic voice on the show uh, numerous times uh, before. She is the owner of ABC Solutions in Clearwater, Florida. They provide complete accounting, business, and tax consulting services to IT professionals in the United States and abroad. Um, in addition to that, the, she also specializes in offering Autotask and M&A consulting services. Uh, kind of the reason why she's on today. You'll find out more about that. To MSPs Worldwide, please welcome the one, the only, the fabulous Rayanne Buccianico. Welcome, Rayanne. Hey, Matt, how are you? Thank you for that amazing introduction. So uh, angelic voice, I don't know that I've ever been accused of that before, but thank you. I could listen to you talk all day, man. <laughs> I love, I love uh, how you sound, uh, and you're just, you're just such a delight uh, to talk to and and hang out with. That's why I get excited, like when you are at our shows and I get to bump into you on the road and stuff, because it's a lot of fun to to visit. Yeah, I like running into you guys too. So <laughs> thank you very much. I bet you've been to several of those over the over the course of the year so far. So uh, you did a keynote for us in Baltimore, if uh, if I remember correctly, and. Um, and I was supposed to be in Columbus, but I ended up catching COVID uh, that week. And um, so I had to make a last minute withdrawal. So I apologize to anybody who was at Columbus and did not get to see me because I was not there. You were sorely missed. You were sorely missed. I, I promise you that. Uh, but for those who who uh, may not have caught a previous show with uh, with you on, tell us a little bit more about you and a little bit more about ABC Solutions. So ABC Solutions stands for Accounting, Business, and Computing Solutions. Like way, way back in the beginning when I first started, 19 years ago, last month, as a matter of fact, um, I was doing, a, a, I'm, an account, I'm an accountant, and I've always done accounting, like my entire adult life. But in, you know, a long time ago, uh, I was also you know, an MS, uh, MCSE, right? Uh, so my, Microsoft certified. And so I used that knowledge to work with, um, with my clients to maintain their technology. So I was an MSP for a while. And then after a while, it just became too much. So got rid of the uh, MSP, but I started um, working with MSPs, helping them with Autotask and connecting their QuickBooks and their Autotask and then making their financials make sense. And then it just kind of grew from there. We're at 18 people now in our firm. Uh, we have various departments, tax department, bookkeeping department, um, payroll and sales tax, uh, invoicing, and so on. So we just keep growing and growing. And it's been a lot of fun. Well, you picked you picked a good industry to serve because it's definitely been a growing uh, industry over the last uh, decade or so. I, you know, I cannot imagine working in any other industry. I just love the IT community. Like no matter where you go, everybody knows everybody, you know, and you have friends all over the world and everybody's just so anxious to help everybody else. It's just, I've never encountered an industry quite like the IT community. I agree. It's a, it's a grand uh, uh, amount of uh, wonderful folks uh, who are fun to bump in. And it's kind of, you know, and, and I always like to say, it's it's a growing industry, but it's still a very a very small industry. You know, you see a lot of the same faces uh, everywhere you go. So so that's pretty cool. Um, but it's great to have you on, Ryan. It really is. Um, and one of the reasons why we have you on is we wanted to, to kind of devote an episode to to uh, mergers and acquisitions and M and A and selling selling or or being sold. Um, if you will, or acquiring or any of those things. Um, because and I I think we talked a little bit about it the last time that you were on. Um, but that was that was a while back. And that was when M&A was like super, super hot. Um, and it was for several years. But I, I guess the M&A markets changed a little bit recently or over, over the re last year or so. What's different about the M&A market today than it was, say, a few years ago? Well, a few years ago, if you remember, we were in this pandemic 
And, uh, and there was a lot of money flowing around. Um, interest rates were super low. There was a lot of free money, you know, being poured into businesses. And, and so you found a lot of business owners found themselves like, Hey, I've got all of this cash on the books. Um, and I can't seem to, you know, get out there, right? You can't, it's not like you could go to networking events and grow your business, you know, um, organically, right? So people started thinking, well, what if I were to buy a, a business? I've got this cash, I can use it. I can invest this cash in my business. That's what it's there for, right? This is why it was given to everybody or lent to everybody, um, you know, so that they could, you know, boost the economy. And it worked, it worked really, really well. So uh, then after a few years, the uh, pandemic started to um, go away. And so did all of those really great interest rates. So it kind of cooled off. People started becoming a little more conservative with what where they spent their money. Plus other costs went up. All of the vendor prices went up. All of the grocery prices went up. I like the cost of everything seemed to have doubled overnight. So people started getting you know, really cautious with the money that they were spending. Um, so, and a lot of that plays into, you know, what, how much money people want to spend on, you know, acquiring another business and what kind of risks are involved. Um, so I feel like the economic conditions had an awful lot to do with, uh, with what's going on in the M&A world, especially in IT. People that are still selling, and there are companies still selling, and there are companies still buying. They just may not be on every street corner like they were a few years ago. I think you said a lot of the activity now is kind of, you said, towards the top and kind of towards the bottom. Why Why is that? Yeah, so the... Uh, you know, and, and then you have this big gap in the center, right? So um, people that have a little bit of cash on hand, you, they want, uh, and they still want to grow. So maybe they could go and buy a real, you know, a micro MSP or, or even a break fix shop to see if they can convert those clients into an MSP. So the buying of client lists, very popular right now. You know, so if somebody's looking to exit, you know, and just, you know, hey, I've got, you know, I've got these 45 clients, these 50 clients, then and they need a new home because I have to retire for whatever reason, or I'm getting ready to move, or I'm getting ready to do something else, you know, then you buy that client list, you know, and forget about all of the valuations and you know, all of the the value of the assets and the value of the stock and the per share price and all of that right? You're talking about buying a client list. And, uh, and that makes it a much easier deal. And of course, you know, you can, you can strategically structure the payout, you know, either one lump sum or, hey, how about if I just give you, you know, 10% of collected revenues in perpetuity for the accounts of yours that stick with me, you know, so there's a lot of flexibility in those small, you know, and those small companies. And then of course, at the top of the scale, you've got, you still have the private equity firms, you know, in the, and the big MSPs that are looking to continue to grow. They're, they're already at, at 40 or 50 million and they want to get to a hundred million or something along those lines, you know, and they have very strict, um, requirements like you need to have a certain level of EBITDA and you have to have a certain level of top line revenue and you have to have a certain percentage of net profit net operating profits you know so um you know and those are targeting the really mature uh MSPs you know uh, up there so now you have this gap between you know that one and six million dollars of revenue you know that um you know, are are there? They're they're not quite you know ready for the big boys, and they're too big for the little little guys. So uh, I feel like it's an underserved market. Yeah, interesting. You mentioned that um, that the current economic conditions are impacting all all kinds of of things in terms of M and A, but it is how is it impacting valuations, right? So if let's say I was an MSP and I was kind of maybe looking to get out, is is now not the right time? 
Um, am I going to get what I want for my business? How How is that happening? Uh, and again, I think it depends on a lot of things. Um, you know, you can probably still find somebody to buy you, even if you're in that mid market, right? You know, However, <laughs> let me just say, however, um, there's probably a lot of things that you need to do before you get there. You know, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of organizing and, you know, cleaning up your uh, cleaning up of your books, not to say that they're not already clean, but you want to pay close attention to them. Have everything ready for, you know, anybody that asks, you know, uh, I need to see three years of your P&Ls and balance sheets, you know, have it ready. Yep. You know, and send it to them in five minutes. And oh, by the way, look, they match my tax returns. You don't even know how. Um, how unique that is to get a set of financials that actually match the tax returns. But that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> what, so what, what can MSPs do before an acquisition to maximize their valuation? What are some good best practices that they should put into place today? So many, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, where do you even start? But, Get a pen, folks. It's going to be a long list. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that some of the top things. Make sure that your processes are documented, right? And all of your clients' accounts are documented and that your team, you know, knows their job and everybody is profitable, right? And that you have profitable profitable contracts and agreements with your clients. You wanna make sure that um, when you to start tracking, here's a really simple thing that you can do. You can start tracking on a monthly basis, top line revenue, gross profit margin, operating margin, and EBITDA numbers, right? Like if you just keep track of that and start watching it and make sure that it goes up every month and when it goes down, find out why. And if you can keep that trend, you know, for a year or two and just keep your eyes on what's going on financially inside your business, um, you know, that's going to that's going to keep your mind focused on the profits. And if you know that your target number, your your operating margin target should be. 10 to 15 percent, and you start seeing it creeping down low to around six or seven percent. Stop, figure out what's wrong, you know, and correct it right away. Don't wait. Um, a couple of other things are really important labor efficiency. Make sure that you're not overstaffed, make sure that you're not understaffed. You want your clients happy and you want your um, employees to be making the company money and not the other way around. Like that's really key. Labor efficiency should be about uh, should be about four times your revenue minus non-labor costs of goods sold. So if you take that number and uh, your your revenue should be four times over that labor. So yes, four times over the labor is, is a good, you know, and that's direct labor. I'm not talking about overhead labor. I'm talking about direct. Um, and I don't want to, now I'm starting to get into weeds, right? Like, you know me, I can just, I can dive into the details. So <laughs> uh, what other things can, uh, can you do to, um, oh, accounts receivable, make sure that the accounts receivable is current and accurate and don't let your clients go, you know, 90 days or 120 days, you know, start, uh, stay on top of the accounts receivable. The faster your clients pay, the more attractive they are for a buyer is going to want to um, take them on as a customer. Nobody wants your, your clients that are two years behind in paying their bills. Nobody wants them, right? Like, cause you can't make money off of somebody who doesn't pay their bill. So um, yeah. And, and keep another cash flow is another great one to keep your eye on. Make sure that your um, month over month cash flow stays positive and grows. You know, if you're taking all of the money out of the business, that's going to negatively affect your cash flow and your working capital on hand. So um, that's just a list to get me started. I could be here all day. <laughs> She's here till 11, folks. <laughs> Tip your waitress. <laughs> I always I always found it fascinating um, talking with you and others uh, to learn how many how many MSPs just 
don't go after their customers for money. They'll service them for months and months and months and not get a dime. And I, I, I how, how is that even possible? One of, you know, we do a lot of um, accounting for, uh, for MSPs, right? Like that's what we do. And every month uh, we meet with our clients, we review the financial statements. And one of them is the accounts receivable report. You know, why is an XYZ paying? You know, um, when are they going to pay? Do you need us to send some follow-ups? Do you need us to, you know, like send, uh, send a mobster out to break their kneecaps? You know, tell us how we can get this money into, uh, into your bank account. And, uh, and we stay on top of them until some plan is in place to get that money collected because you can't just leave it. The longer it sits and, and it goes stale, the harder it is to collect. Yeah, and we also learned another valuable lesson. Don't get on Rand, Rand's bad side. <laughs> <laughs> she has hired thugs, folks. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, mentioned, um, you mentioned some of the tax uh, implications. And I don't think that gets talked about enough. There are a lot of um, benefits and liabilities uh, from a tax perspective when you go to to sell or buy. What what are some of those and how can MSPs kind of maximize those benefits and minimize the, the liabilities in an acquisition? Yeah, you know, and you're right, Matt, you know, nobody ever asks this question. And it's usually like, uh, you know, I'm a partner in the company called Semi MSP, and one of the things we do is we help um, negotiate terms of a purchase agreement. And I'm always the first and only person to say, let's talk about the tax implications of the various, you know, because the buyer, they want all of the immediate gratification of buying this business. So they're going to try to um, to put as much value into like into the inventory. You might have five thousand dollars of inventory, and they are going to want to value it at one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars or one hundred and fifty thousand. Why? Because that's immediately deductible to them. But guess what? It's ordinary taxable income to you, the seller. So um, so we don't want ordinary income items to you know have a greater value non-competes are um ordinary income inventory is ordinary income right we want to have a higher value on things that are capital uh, our capital gains um items such as the client list and you know the uh, the fixed assets and all of the tangible assets, like those things are going to be capital, you know, going to be taxed at capital gains rates, which is far more um, attractive than your ordinary tax rates, especially if you're selling a business for a few million dollars, because, you know, you could pay 37 percent of, of tax on that sale, or you could pay 20 percent on of tax on that sale. Which one of these people do you want to be? So my job is to make sure that you get to capitalize on capital gains as much as possible and push back on those ordinary income items. Yeah, it seems like if you're on the 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 selling end, that could really really make a, a huge difference. Oh, it does. It makes an enormous difference. And, um, you know, and you were asking what other things that you could do when, when you're preparing your company for sale. Uh, I did this with one MSP. Um, they historically would take, you know, profit distributions out of the company. And, uh, and so I said to, said to them, hey, listen, if you're looking to sell this thing in the next year or so, why don't you stop taking those profit distributions? Leave the money in the company, build up your basis in the, in the value of the company so that when you sell it, your basis is high and your gain is low. And, uh, and so they took, they took my advice and uh, um, was able to add an additional $200,000 of basis amount um, onto, you know, onto the value of their stock. So when they sold, you know, they had a much lower gain. And um, anyway, you know, and it's a very simple thing that's not going to affect, like you're paying tax on the income of your company, whether you take it or not, right? You may as well leave it in there if you're preparing for sale and take advantage of those, addition, uh, of those additional basis dollars. 
Well, wow, so just a little bit of thought in advance, right? Just a little bit. And this is why, folks, you got to get um, someone like like Rayanne or Rayanne herself uh, to to partner with, because these are the things that you can think about and do today that can make just a, such an enormous difference. And, you know, and we're talking evaluation swings of millions and depending on the size of the MSP. Right. And that's that's a lot of cheddar to leave on the table. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And you don't want to give it all to the IRS either. Yes. Yes. We do not want Uncle Sam to become uh, richer than uh, than he is. So um, so so let me ask you. A question. So that's an interesting that you've seen those kinds of those kinds of swings. What are what are any horror stories that you've seen for people who do not heed uh, our advice and not think ahead? What are what are some MA horror stories that you've got that to share? Uh, with um, so there's. There's a couple, like, though, I want to say the worst ones are when a partnership is breaking up. So years, you know, years and years ago, you thought it was a really great idea to go into business with your good friend, um, Joe. And so <laughs> Joe, you know, Joe and you, uh, Joe and Bob have this great relationship and they build up this MSP and everything's going fine. Then one day, um, it, Joe decides that he doesn't need to come into work anymore. And so he doesn't, but still owns 50% of the company. Now, Bob's doing all of the work and getting more and more angry at Joe. And uh, and then finally, they say, let's, let's split this up and go our separate ways. Bob wants to buy Joe out. This is, uh, this is where nightmares are made <laughs> because, you know, Joe wants all sorts of money for this business that he hasn't worked in in two and a half years that Bob has worked in order to build the value. And uh, and so Bob wants to continue to run this business, but Joe is like, yeah, I still own 50, 50%, you know, and if it sounds an awful lot like a divorce you might have gone through, that's exactly what it is. You know, so when you take on a partner, you are marrying that person. And whenever somebody comes in and says, hey, uh, you know, we're thinking about starting up this business. We've got this great synergy. And uh, and so I just really, I look at them and I say, you know, do you like each other enough to get married? You know, because partnerships are an awful lot like marriage, right? Real easy to get into, not so easy to get out of. And um, so I've, I've seen really good friendships go south when uh, when they're trying to sell a business, even if they're trying to sell it to a third party, because inevitably one um, one partner wants more money, the other partner just wants out, or one partner wants to stay on, and the other partner wants you know like it's almost impossible to get both partners to agree. So I I've seen some really awful things happen to really good friends as a result of selling a business. If you have a partner, if you have another shareholder um, or somebody else that has an, uh, an ownership interest in your company, before you start entertaining ideas, do yourselves a favor and sit down and agree. You know, you might have that operating agreement and say, oh, that's all covered by the operating agreement. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything when it comes to selling this business, right? You still have to get somebody to sign the papers. Take some time, sit down, have a cup of coffee and outline exactly, you know, what do you need? This is what I need. What do you want? This is what I want. Uh, okay, where can, you know, what what can we agree on here in order to make this sale, you know, work? So, you need like um, a prenuptial agreement for business. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know how good that would be, like the prenup, right? Be, it, um, because again, still somebody, you know, everybody has to sign off on it at the end of the day. And if one person isn't happy, they can make the whole deal go south. Yeah, and then the only person that wins in those arrangements are the lawyers. Absolutely. I've been there too. 
<laughs> well, uh, great conversation, great discussion. I know I learned a lot, and I'm sure other people learned a lot and got some great advice. Uh, and there's going to be a little more advice to come. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to hit Rayanne with our uh, three questions uh, segment. We'll have, it'll be the first time she's ever done that here with us. And uh, and we'll wrap up the show with a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So more ahead. Stay, stick around. We will be right back. And welcome back to part two of episode 267. Rand Buccianico is still here with us on the other side, and we're getting ready to pepper her with three hot questions uh, in our three question segment uh, to get her take on some. Bring it. So <laughs> she's she's ready. Look at her. She's raring to go. Let's All go. right, here we go. Question number one. How can an MSP retain key employees during a merger and acquisition? You know, it's interesting. It's a great question because I feel like I'm going through one of those right now. Um, the it, I'm working with uh, I'm working with a buyer of and a small MSP that came with two key employees, and they are really struggling to keep them motivated. And they're concerned that after the retention bonuses are paid out at the end of the year, that one or both of them might walk. So we are working on uh, bonus structures, you know, based on profitability, getting them more involved in the leadership of the company, like. So you want to sit down with those key employees and find out what motivates them, because not all of them are motivated by money. You know, money, money helps, but there may be other things that, you know, that are really important to them and to their career growth. And if you invest in those employees, you know, then you have a better chance of them sticking around long after the acquisition is over. Awesome. Question number two, how MSPs can ensure a smooth transition during an M&A? Oh, gosh. Plan, plan, plan. Like, you have got to plan this. Um, here's an, another one that uh, I've been going through that uh, the buyer acquired, um, the, the buyer uses one PSA and the seller used another PSA. And so you, there was an entire... Um, there was an entire project involved in getting all of the agreements from one PSA and convert them into contracts in the other PSA and make sure that invoicing stays, you know, um, stays accurate and on time. You have to keep those invoices going. So if there's a lot of recurring revenue, you want to focus primarily on getting those recurring revenue invoices, you know, flowing as quickly as possible. Plan as far ahead as uh, as possible to import the customers. You know, get the PSA, import the tickets. You know, you're probably going to want to if, if you have to switch PSAs. You're probably going to want to keep a license or two around so that you can, you know, instead of you know importing a bunch of old tickets, just keep keep it around so that you can, you know, refer back to it, but, you know, plan all of the transitions, the PSA, the RMM, you know, you can push out RMMs through, you know, scripts and things like that, the documentation, um, you know, and the employee records, all of that, like, take your time, make a list and get it all planned out. Awesome. And question number three, one important do and an important don't during an event. An important do, um, do uh, hire an accounting firm, hire a trusted advisor, hire somebody that can walk you through this entire process um, and don't attempt to do it alone, right? Like you wouldn't walk into uh, an income tax or a sales tax audit by yourself without proper representation. You don't want to sell um, sell your business without somebody on your side, making sure that your interests are protected. Fantastic. Well, folks, if you want to, uh, I hope you got, I took a little bit away from those three questions. And of course, subscribe uh, anywhere podcasts are, are aggregated. You'll, you'll find us everywhere. We're also on YouTube as well. Make sure that you, uh, you hit the, the, the like, the subscribe button and the bell uh, smash the bell, I think is what they say on the on the cool kids channels now. Uh, so do that, and that way you can join us uh, here at Channel 4 Weekly each and every week. Uh, Ran, I want to thank you so much uh, for coming on. I, I don't want to say goodbye quite yet, because I want to 
take a minute to talk about events because we've got uh, great events uh, coming up all uh, across the country here the rest of the year. Uh, we're hosting numerous in-person online events um, that offer MSPs and IT solution providers valuable insights and education to help them manage and grow their business. And uh, Ryan, what did anything I just say there? Is that is, is all of that true? It is all true. And I am so thankful that, uh, first of all, you're welcome uh, for uh, being on your show, but thank you for inviting me as always, because I love uh, hanging out with the U Channel Pro folks. You guys are the best. And yes, you do have all sorts of online events coming up and in-person events coming up. And I always recommend everybody should uh, attend because you're going to learn a lot and you're going to meet some really cool people along the way. Awesome. And uh, folks, I'm no lies. I didn't pay her a cent to say all that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so take her advice and join us in a few weeks on July 17th. We have for our next Channel Pro Deep Dive online event. Uh, that's, uh, like I said, online. Um, it's going to be focused on cybersecurity. You can join from anywhere. Um, you can join from the comfort of your own sofa at home, whatever it is. Just make sure you, you join us. It's free for uh, for qualified attendees. And then coming up uh, August 7th and 8th is our first Channel Pro Defend event of the year in Isla, New Jersey. That's a two-day cybersecurity focus event that's just jam-packed with great sessions and networking opportunities. And after that, we're going to be rolling into uh, North Carolina and, and Charlotte and more to follow after that in Dallas and LA. Um, all events, like I said, are free for qualified attendees. Um, lots of uh, motivating things uh, for, for folks to attend. So um, if you're if you're listening on your phone, um, open up the description area of your phone. We're going to put links in to those events. So if you're anywhere in those areas, uh, please uh, make sure that you join us. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, uh, I'm going to put some QR codes up on the screen for you. Uh, make sure you scan those and register today. Um, and of course, go to channel4network.com each and every day. That's where you'll find the latest news, headlines, um, press releases, resources, all kinds of great information to help you and your business. Um, Bookmark it, set it as, as your homepage. Join us there each and every day. Like I said, subscribe to Channel 4 Weekly everywhere. Podcasts and stuff are found. Make sure you tell a friend, tell a colleague, tell a, uh, tell a neighbor, tell your spouse, tell Tell your your pets, your neighbor's pets, your friend's pets. Uh, actually, we don't need that many pets listening. Um, I don't know how how well they scan QR codes in the in the uh, the dog or feline world, but uh, tell tell all of the relevant people in your life uh, to join us each and every week, so you have something to discuss. You know, we're going to have great topics, and you want to talk about those topics with your colleagues and get their takes as well. So make sure you uh, you tell a friend. Uh, if you have any feedback, uh, podcast at channel4network.com is where you can send those emails, and uh, and I will get those, and I will read them, and we will we will do something with them. We will listen to you. We will make make changes. We will have guests on. We will talk about things you want to talk about because this is the show for you. And uh, Rayanne, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you, get a hold of you, uh, partner with you, where can they go? How can they find you? Um, you, you can start at our website, ABC Solutions FL, like Florida, at ABC Solutions FL.com. Don't forget the FL, or you're going to land on somebody else's website. But uh, yeah, you can start there. Um, our We're redoing our website, but uh, yeah, it's still super, you know, very live and uh, very accessible. Awesome. Well, check that out. We'll put a link to uh, her website also in this show description uh, as well. So make sure you you click on that and uh, learn more about Rayanne. And with that, Rayanne, thank you so much again for coming on. It was a, uh, a blast having you on, and I look forward to having you on again. Thanks, Matt. Always great to see you. Have a great always, day. Always great to see you as well. And always great to see our listeners and viewers. Uh, but uh, we, we are going to sign off for now. We'll be back with episode 268 next week. Until then.